Welcome back to the sixth and final video of my fiber laser cutter build series. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over building the enclosure and give a few updates. So let's go. I'm going to be sharing some of my experiences with you, but please understand I'm a complete novice on this subject. Lasers can be very dangerous, so if you choose to operate one, please understand the safety risks and do your own research and uh, please be safe. As you can see, during my testing, uh, it throws a lot of sparks and makes a lot of fumes, so I'm going to need to build an enclosure. I take some measurements and start cutting down some aluminum extrusion for the enclosure frame. The quick enclosure design that I came up with is only going to be to contain the fumes and the sparks. It's going to offer zero eye protection, so I'm still going to have to wear my safety glasses while cutting. I use some corner brackets to assemble the frame before getting it mounted up on top of the machine. Once installed, I can take some measurements for the panels. I get the roof and three sidewall panels cut out of Coroplast. I get the roof panel installed, and then the three walls. I cut down a piece of aluminum angle to act as extra support for the back panel, and then I get that installed. I installed it to keep the optical cable from bowing out the back panel when the cutting head's moving around. I bought some acrylic panels for the front door and I used my CO2 laser to cut out holes for the hardware. Now I can get the handle attached to the acrylic. I designed it to fit and slide inside the channel of the 2020 extrusion. I install some corner brackets that I previously cut out with a laser to add extra support. And I think those are going to work well. I designed some mounting brackets to hold the top piece of acrylic and then 3D print those parts. And here are the acrylic panels installed. I just need to design a latching system to hold the door when I need it open. I couldn't find any accordion bellows to buy that will ride in the groove of the 2020 extrusion, so I take a stab at making my own. Uh, I start by cutting out some pieces out of plastic on my CO2 laser. I just barely cut through the plastic so that I could easily pop them out rather than chasing the individual pieces all over my laser. And here are the pieces. I first attempted to cut them out of aluminum, but they just didn't slide very well in the channel. I start building the accordion by using aluminum tape to attach all the plastic pieces together. It's a slow process and I'm not sure how durable it's going to be, but it's the best idea I have right now. And here's a demonstration of what I'm going for. It seems like it's going to work. Then I design and 3D print a couple mounting brackets for the accordions. And here's what that looks like finished. I get both of the front accordions installed and give it a test and it seems like it's going to work. I need a break from assembling accordions so I design a latch system for the door. It's spring loaded so when I lift the door up it automatically holds it and then I press the lever when I want to release it. Here's the 3D printed latch ready to install. I get the latch installed and it seems to work. Cool, so now I can move on. Before I can install the back accordions, I need to reroute all these wires and hoses. And I don't really want to disassemble the whole machine to do so, so the best option I can come up with is cutting a notch out of this side plate. I design a part to both contain the cables and hide my hack job of a notch. I 3D print the part and get it installed. It's certainly not my best work, but I think it'll get the job done. I finish making both of the back accordions and get them installed. Everything seems to work, so the enclosure is done for now. I eventually would like to upgrade it with metal panels and laser safety glass, but at least I feel much better about containing the fumes right now. Here's a final look at the enclosure. I'm still doing some research. I'd like to find a laser absorbent coating that I could coat this entire enclosure with so that it's not so reflective. When I was originally buying components for the machine, I wanted to get these diaphragm couplers for the servo motors, but at the time they were back ordered for like a month. But I was able to purchase them now, so I'm going to take off all the servo motors and get them installed. I replaced both the couplers for the Y motors, and also for the X axis and the Z axis. When I hooked up my fume extraction, I ended up putting a carbon filter at the end and after that it seemed like it didn't quite have enough suction so I upgraded to a more powerful blower fan to improve the fume extraction. Well that pretty much wraps up this build for now. 
Uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of what's involved in building a fiber laser cutter. Um, if it's really something you want to do, consider joining my Patreon where I have a bunch of extra content and a private forum where we discuss building the machine. Um, I got a lot of cool projects coming up, like I'm almost done building a fiber laser engraver machine, and I've got uh, my uh, CNC conversion to the Mazo G3 Touch was going to be pretty cool. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, special thanks to all my Patreons for supporting this project. Thank you guys. Bye.